Welcome to Lesson 45, where we will discuss colligative properties which relate to vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, and freezing point depression. A colligative property is a property of a solution that depends only on the number of particles that you place into a solution and not the identity of those particles. So it doesn't matter if you add salt or sugar, the colligative property will be the same. See in this picture here that when we add substances to a pure solvent like on the left, we create more entropy on the right. This entropy or chaos causes the vapor or gas phase to decrease. It is these intermolecular forces that will result in a colligative property. The first colligative property we're going to look at is called vapor pressure lowering. As we have more intermolecular forces occurring between solute and solvent, the vapor pressure will decrease. Since the vapor pressure will decrease, we can remember from reference table H, as vapor pressure goes down, boiling point increases. You can see here in the graph in red, we have the boiling point and freezing point of pure water. But when we add salt to the water, we increase the boiling point because we decrease the vapor pressure. When we add a non-volatile solute to a pure solvent, is we create more intermolecular forces in the solution. These greater intermolecular forces cause the vapor pressure to lower. This will cause the boiling point to increase. So by decreasing the vapor pressure, we are elevating the boiling point. Solutions that have solute dissolved in them will always have a higher boiling point than the pure solvent. So if you had any solution with something dissolved in it like salt water, salt water always has a higher boiling point than pure water. You can see in this graph where we're graphing how the concentration or amount of sugar, sucrose, is dissolved in water increases the boiling point of water. So again, colligative properties do not depend on what you add to your pure solvent, just how many particles you add. So pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and the more particles you add, the higher the boiling point becomes. This does not mean that water with something dissolved in it, in this case salt, will boil faster. It'll just boil at a higher temperature. So in degrees Fahrenheit, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But when we add salt to it, it will actually boil at 216. So adding salt to pasta water does not make the water boil faster, but it can make the pasta cook faster since the water will actually be hotter. The other consequence of adding solute to a pure solvent is freezing point depression. So the boiling point increases and the freezing point decreases. This is why we add salt to icy roads because normally the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, but adding salt can decrease the freezing point to a negative number. So again, adding solute particles to a pure solvent increases intermolecular forces. These increased intermolecular forces between solute and solvent interfere with the solvent's ability to organize into a solid, thus lowering its freezing point. It's like traveling through a crowded area. If you need to form a line in an empty area with a group of your friends, it's quite easy. But if it's really crowded, it'll take a longer time for you to assemble into an organized mass because you have to walk around all of the other people in the crowd. To remember for colligative properties is that they're dependent on not the identity of what's added to the solvent, but the number of particles. An ionic particles dissociate or break up into their individual ions 
when they are added to water. But covalent particles do not dissociate, so they will make less particles in water. So here you can see that when I put in one sodium chloride, I get two particles. But when I put in one sugar, I only get one particle. So the more particles or ions, the greater the colligative property, the higher the boiling point and the lower the freezing point. Compare similar ionic compounds like sodium chloride with two ions and calcium chloride with three ions, we know that the substance with more ions will have a greater impact on raising the boiling point and lowering the freezing point. Let's look at this question. In this question, we want to know which has the highest boiling point or the greatest effect. So this big capital M represents the concentration of the solutions. So first, we want to find the most concentrated solutions. So point 0.2 has a greater concentration than point 0.1. And between our two options, D is an ionic compound with three ions, while E is covalent. That is why D is the best choice. It has the most particles. It has three particles at 0.2 molarity, while E only has one particle at 0.2 molarity. Let's see if you can answer this question independently. Here we are looking for the greatest boiling point. First, you want to find the most concentrated solution by looking at the concentration listed with the capital M for molarity. Then, once you identify the most concentrated solution, you want to find the solution with the most number of particles. Ionic solutions always make more particles than covalent solutions. Ionic particles will break up into individual ions. Covalent will not. In this question, we're looking for the lowest freezing point. Again, the boiling point increases and the freezing point decreases when we have more particles. First, find the most concentrated solution. Then, find the solution that will produce the most particles. In this example, all the choices are ionic, so find the solution with the most ions. Here is one more practice regents question. Can you summarize today's lesson and find the impact of the colligative property? Make sure you take notes and you bring any questions you have to class. See you soon.